on Sports Today. The coaches back to back for Parkland Mazda, the number one team at Parkland Mazda Cannington. On 882 6PR. As we welcome in Ross Lyon from the Fremantle Dockers. Walked away from the MCG with uh, mixed emotions yesterday, Ross. Frustrated, but on some positives as well. So, what about you? Yeah, frustrated and um, disappointed overall, but certainly new week, new dawn, new opportunity. But uh, yeah, we need to review it and um, train well and, and prepare for Adelaide. I think we all agree that you looked, the team looked flat. They, they butchered the ball. They didn't take the right options. The skill errors were there, etc. But to be so close at nine points in the last quarter, that's why I walked away thinking, well, geez, it was hardly your best team. So there are some things to look forward to going, and going into the future. Yeah, look, I think it's a really positive way to look at it. Um, and there's no doubt, um, you know, Aaron should play this week and Nick Subin should be available. And, and we see him in our best sort of 18, 22. So that, that's a positive. But I, I don't think we can ignore how poor our stoppage work was. Um, there's been a theme and we're, we're struggled. Our clearance work has been really bad. So I think, you know, everyone's got to take some responsibility for that. Um, starts with me and then it goes to... Kirk and Stone and, you know, Fife, Mundy, Barlow, all those types and, and the Ruckman. So we'll, we'll look at that. And, and, you know, we just slaughtered the footy as well when we did have some golden opportunities. So it was a combination. But look, I thought Richmond were, were, you know, a little bit harder than us when it counted and, and ran a bit harder than us when it counted. So we're disappointed with that. Ross, um, just, uh, you know, probably going back to the Geelong games, around 14, 15 against St Kilda, you're ordinary with, a, with just basic skills and disposal and sometimes under no pressure, missing targets. I thought better against West Coast. And then on the weekend again, just gave the footy away too easy. Is that something that uh, you, you've measured over the last month? And how does that compare? If you uh, have. No, not so much measure. I think it's just blatantly obvious when you yeah. score to the footy. Um, I think it's just a bit, not a thing. We spoke about doing the basics well. So some of those slaughtered kicks were, it'd be eight, not backing back quickly enough and getting off your mark and getting it to the free player. So mm. it was like half backing off and kicking the man in the mark and missing the opportunity. So we, we, we spoke about that, but clearly we must be doing it somewhere in training. So you, you wouldn't want to be a player this week that doesn't back off the training, I can tell you that one. No, for sure. Now, on your opposition analysis, you would have realised that obviously Richmond are one and two or thereabouts in the uh, scoring from from stoppages. Yep. So, uh, and unfortunately, your boys just allowed them to do that again yesterday. Yeah, look, and I, I looked at all the scores against um, today and our defenders have got to play a part of them. They only walked out the length of the ground once, you know, so uh, with real midfield spread. So... A number of times they just got hacked forward and then defenders got beaten one on one, and uh, which has been unusual for them. But uh, they'll, they'll see some vision tomorrow that they they won't put up on their mantelpiece as their best efforts. So um, yeah, it was it was not only the mids, it was it was the backs as well. So um, but you know it's such a hard game. I have felt if you're down in one area, at the end of the day, what we lost by was the difference in the clearances. You know, so turnover scores were equal. You know, we, we scored on kick-ins and, and they didn't. So the real difference was um, clearance scores. So it's pretty simple. Mm. You had uh, had a, a lot of young... You've got a lot of young players, a lot of inexperience in the side on the weekend. How much responsibility do you, as a senior coach, put on them? Well, once you run down the race, I, I'm sure they think they're picked and ready to go. So don't walk into my office and say, coach, pick me, but I can only give this much. So mm. we, we pick them on performance and ability to give to the team's needs. So we, we understand they're young and they want to understand all scenarios, but there's no excuse for, for not tackling, for not chasing and not competing. So, um, you know, the age certificate doesn't have on it you can't compete. So we're pretty strong on that. You come in and you compete and you see some other young teams around the league that are competing really well. So um, we don't discriminate once you run down the road. Ross, the thing that was other, also frustrating yesterday, I mean, I know that uh, Hanneth and uh, Zach took a few marks, but they dropped more than they should have too. I mean, and that's, that's in, geez, that's paramount, isn't it? Because if you, if you take the mark, then they can feed the ball off to a runner or whatever, and things look terribly, terribly dangerous. But when they continue to get their hands first on the ball and drop it, Aaron does it a bit, um, and the ball comes to ground, those blokes who weren't going to be in the play all of a sudden are in the play. You're right. It, it gives you flow through, through the line, doesn't it? If you catch it and dish it off. You're moving. Look, for the first time, we won the contested mark battle 16 to 7 or 9 or something like that. But it's where you take them. They, they took two or three in their forward 50. We didn't take one. So, look, I, I think they are young Ruckman. You know, there's an article Simon Madden on Cruiser. who was the number one pick in the country. He said, 
you want to see the best into a hundred games. So I think Jack's in his sixth or seventh game, and Zach Clark is a ruckman. You know, he's really thin on the ground as well. So we know that they they're going to continue to grow and. Um, they'll continue to get opportunity and look, Aaron at the back end, isn't he? I mean, if we we all talk seriously, really, the three guys that weren't there, McFarlane, Pavlich and, and Aaron at the back end, you know, it could finish very quickly for those guys. So we, we had a look at Fremantle going forward, you know, so we need our young mm. guys to step up. You, you've had a, a lot of consistent players playing really well, getting a lot of the footy, but have you been concerned in the last few weeks that a few of the good opposition players have been getting off the leash? Yeah, look, you, you come up against quality every week, you know. As a rule of thumb, I think we do really well. Um, and our midfield, you know, you don't sit basically fifth on the ladder if your midfield hasn't been able to deliver. So we've lost four games and um, one of them was by a kick or two of them, you know, we're, we're really close. So um, they're doing a lot right. It's a long, arduous season, but we're, we're, we want to be a no-excuse football club. So we've got a lot of the reasons why we fell short and then, um, improve this weekend. Adelaide are going to come over full of life. You know they've knocked off Geelong, and you know they're, they're a confidence team, and it, it, the challenges don't get any easier. Well, hasn't it changed the landscape? Because we thought, well, every game's big. We know that, and but every game's a danger game. But we thought maybe they'd be coming over this week, probably out of the hunt. They're right back in it now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and look, you don't want easy games to to get to the finals. You want to earn the right to get there, so that then when you're there, you know you can stand up under under real pressure. So if you're going to stand up under pressure during home and away, and no use being gifted a finals finals ticket. So we, we want to earn the right to get there like we have been. And um, so when we get there, we know we can stand up against what's thrown at us. So th- this week's a really big challenge. I, I thought you made a great point. Uh, I think it was during the week where you made the statement that uh, it, people have been saying you've got an easy draw. You haven't seen it yet. Uh, that rings true, <laughs> doesn't it? Hey? When you have a look at the weekend. Yeah, yeah the competition. I mean, the pies go... You know, well, we knew when we went up there early in the year at Gold Coast how dangerous they were and how difficult it is. And if you, you know, really, at the end of the day, all the pies didn't do was kick straight. They dominated every other area. So, um, and Adelaide, you know, Geelong are 30 points up. It's frightening, really. And, and the Blues are really capable of being a top four team when you look at their personnel. So, and they're, they're sitting, what, ninth on the ladder. It, it, it's a frightening proposition. If you want to breathe out and you, you think you can bathe in the glow of success, you you, um, you get a really sharp reminder in this competition, as we did on the weekend. So, Big Aaron Mack, who else has, comes under strong consideration for a game this week? Yeah, well, Subin, um, obviously off injury. And then, um, looking reading the Waffle Report, Josh Mallington was very good, and Viv Mitchie was very good again, and Fox was very good. So, um, we'll look at have a look at him. You know, can he come in? Because we know he, he can really kick it and he can defend. So, we... we uh, we will have a look at those um, those guys in particular. Just quick one, Ross. I got an SMS from one of your fans asking about Morabito. Is he is he far away? Because uh, uh, there was reading a report that he was a couple of weeks away, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think it's really indefinite. You, you'd tag him. He's um, he's doing the majority of footy drills. You know, he's up around the the, the 90th percentile, I suppose, of where he needs to. You need to tick a hundred boxes. He's probably ticked ninety. So. Um, we'll be taking no risk. We'll, we'll be going slow and steady. And um, speaking to Anthony over the last few weeks, he's really happy with his progress. And I think it's probably about time, you know, that that he, he feeds in himself. We, we like Anthony to be able to um, talk and outline how he's feeling, where he's at, and keep all our loyal members and, and fans involved. So uh, I think that's probably prompted me. We'll have a discussion this week and, and see if we can get Anthony to give everyone an update because I'm, I'm sure they're keen to hear.